Welcome to Teen YPWW Lesson 2. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's topic is the definition of power, part 2. The lesson text is coming out of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 20, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 13, and James chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. The memory verse is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I will read the King James Version first, and then the New International Version. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The New International Version. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. The key for today's lesson. Wisdom Builder. What is power? The focus for today's lesson, introduction to our series on God's unlimited power. The scientific definition of power is the rate at which work is done or energy converted. In science, the question of power becomes, how fast can this work be done? We are often judged by how much we can get done on our school assignments and job tasks. This assessment of the rate of work sometimes causes us to be competitive. Wanting to complete an assignment before everyone else is not a bad desire. However, when you finish first by cheating, this is a bad idea. Another definition of power is a person's ability to influence others. This type of social power can be seen throughout life in a variety of situations at school, in family life, or with social issues. If abused, this type of power can harm. Usually power in its natural occurrence is not negative. Social power can be used to help others by facilitating their growth and self-actualization. Never use your power or influence to be unfair. Eventually, you will risk getting in trouble. A greater good would be to use your influence and strength to help others. This type of behavior helps you to have bold assurance to ask God for help whenever you need him. Our memory verse states that God may give us the spirit of wisdom. This means that God wants to give us the spirit of wisdom so that we may understand more about him and the weightier matters of life. James chapter 1 verse 5 encourages us to ask God for wisdom. Pray and ask God for wisdom, teen listeners, so that you can succeed and realize your dreams. Our levels of success increase when we are wise. Our accomplishments tend to increase when we make wise decisions. We reach our goals at a faster rate when we are wise. To find out some things we need, the spirit of wisdom, God wants you to know him first and foremost. The more we know about God, the more we can understand his ways. God's power supersedes and is greater than any other power that we know on earth. This is the first principal thing we need to know about God. He is bigger, greater, omnipotent, omnipresent, magnificent, marvelous, matchless, and all-powerful. There are many more adjectives that we can use to describe God. It is also important for you to know that God in all of his splendor, might, and majesty loves you unconditionally. Because of God's love for you, he is willing to use his power to help you in times of your need. This is the foundational truth of our studies this quarter. God's awesome power can help us to do awesome things. When you have a difficult assignment at school, you can pray for wisdom. You can ask God to open your understanding so that you can learn what you are required to know. Now, when you pray those types of prayers, you must do your part in the acquiring of knowledge that you need. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 6 through 8 says, Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get an understanding. Cherish her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. Here's the pursuit, teen listeners. You are encouraged to run after and chase down wisdom. When needing help, learning difficult concepts at school, you must study. Join study groups and ask for tutorial help. God will 
God will then bless your efforts and increase your wisdom in that subject. God loves to place his supernatural power on our efforts. You may even experience a miracle of understanding and revelatory knowledge as you study. Sometimes you will just begin to know what you didn't know before. It's a supernatural phenomenon, God's power working on your behalf. Our knowledge of God's almighty power releases us to believe that we can accomplish our goals. We need to develop the blessed assurance that God will help us, even when your situation looks and feels hopeless in one area or another. You can still believe that God is planning to rescue you in the very near future. We know that God will never forget you because of his unfailing love for you. No matter how long it takes, you can wait patiently for God to act on your behalf. In the end, team listeners, you will win and be delivered by the unfailing powerful hand of God. Two additional definitions of power are given, scientific power and social power. The spirit of wisdom and acquiring wisdom are discussed. Students are encouraged to pray and ask God for wisdom. Students need to know that God wants them to have wisdom and pursue more wisdom as well. It is through obtaining wisdom we can know and believe that God's power is available to help all believers who ask for it. God's massive love for us assures us that he will use his power to help us. The questions for today's lesson. Number one, what are some other powers on the earth besides scientific power and social power? Number two, why is it important to continue studying after you have asked God to open up your understanding to learn a difficult subject? And number three, will God just download knowledge into your mind if you pray harder, more passionately, or longer? Then, God bless you and thank you for joining me today.